Now, I'd like to start with some questions for you. How many of you have ever really, really put massive effort into some project, some task, really done your best, and at the end of it, just didn't get the recognition for it? <laughs> Any of you <coughs> fed up with people promising they'll do all kinds of stuff for you and don't deliver? <laughs> or maybe, especially in the current climate, all, I don't know, rumours about restructuring, redundancies, things like that. You're just under massive pressure and worried about your job. Anyone? Not so, not so many. All self-employed. Yeah, we're we're used to that. Yeah, there's a reason. Like, <laughs> yeah, actually, somebody said to to me well, a few years ago, self-employed. Yeah, I'm the worst boss I've ever had. So yeah. So th it seems like there's a common uh, understanding. We, we all face these kind of situations. Well, I'd like to let you know help is at hand because there are ways to actually systematically work on and deliver tangible results given the vagaries of, of people you've got to work with and so on. I believe there are things that you can do. And more importantly, in Toastmasters, this great supportive environment that we're in. H have we got anybody new to Toastmasters here? Anybody? Welcome. Um, so f forgive me if there's any jargon and, uh, and stuff. Or stop me if you say, what on earth are you on about? Uh, but hopefully we'll give you a bit of a flavour of just what you can learn in Toastmasters. Because I think a lot of people join because they want to improve their speaking. And, you know, and that's, that's where it starts, which is great. But I'd like to plant seeds for those of you that may not have realised really just how much more there is. And as Anne said, I'm a distinguished Toastmaster DTM. In February, I'll be 11 years in Toastmasters. And the thing that keeps me coming is the fact there's always new things to learn. And so that, that's the sort of thing. I think the only limits are, are your own head in, in some ways. And the more you put yourself out and be open just to what's there. So my, I have two objectives for my, my session this morning with you. One is to give you some tips on how to deliver results. But it's also about being aware what areas in Toastmasters to focus on in order to help develop your skills and become even better. Does that sound worthwhile? So that's what we, we're going to work on now. If I find my clicker, I'll probably get this out of the way so it doesn't block the slide. Achieving results. Sometimes in life, we can be faced with situations where we think, oh my goodness, how on earth am I going to achieve that? Achieving the impossible. Now, here was a situation. If you read a bit of the blurb on my um, handout and, and bio and stuff, you will see I spent uh, most of my early career, first 15 years, in manufacturing, and particularly in the auto industry. November 1998, I was in charge of a car component company in Germany, making all the rubber door seals and window seals um, for cars. Quite a big, big supplier. And on Sunday, I got a panic phone call to say, the Werk 4 is in brand. The factory's burning down. And when I got there, the Sunday night, uh, I could smell it from six kilometers away, a rancid smell of, uh, of rubber, if any of you experience it. It's not one you forget. Um, arc lights, the, water, the road was half flooded with all the, the water and foam and so on. It was a dramatic sight. The next day, this is, uh, this is what it looked like. Um, now, here was the challenge. We were supplying to about a third of the European car industry. And we, uh, yeah, we had a number of big clients, Volkswagen, Audi, Ford, who would stop very quickly, you know, within a couple of days on some of them, um, if we didn't do something. And so this, you know, there was a quite a, a clear challenge on what to do. There was one particular uh, set of parts, though, for Audi, that nobody else could do. We couldn't source within our group, competitors, and they were located right, and you can see right at the back there, 
fortunately, it was part of the building that was, had been an extension, so there was a, uh, an extra thick wall. The fire had come in over the top there, and three of the lines had been these huge long extrusion lines, about 100, 120 metres long. Three of them were destroyed, but the three we really needed were damaged. They were underwater and all sorts of stuff. But the game on, we had seven days to get them going. And what was staggering was just what was possible in those seven days. And through you know, demolishing part of the building, putting a new roof, uh, drying out all the electronics with hair dryers and whatever, you know, working round the clock. It was like something out of X-Files. The, all these containers appeared in the car park with people with men in white suits. And it was, <laughs> I was like, where did they come? Red Cross tent. It was unbelievable. I don't know where do these people come from, but it was all happening. And with two hours to go, we managed to get parts mm -hmm. off for Audi. Now, this story stuck with me because it was such a clear demonstration when the chips are down, just what is possible to be achieved. And I was reinforcing that, uh, some of my experiences earlier in production with crises and all sorts of things. Again, when, when things are clear, you, know, you focus on things, you can achieve a lot. And over the last 10 years, working with a lot of small companies where, again, they've got to be very quick on their, on their feet, uh, otherwise they go under, cash crises come up, need to find solutions. I've been refining this uh, set of, of skills and techniques to deliver results. And that's what I want to share with you, just briefly, the, uh, the tips that we've got. And the first one, they say, is being clear about, and these are listed on the handout. What we're going to do is I'm going to take you through uh, these, and there's seven of them, and then we're going to focus on three today just to give you a bit of practice and think about how you can use your Toastmaster skills, where to be focusing your Toastmaster's effort to get some, some progress. So, first one, be clear. In a situation where a factory's burnt down, it's pretty obvious what you want to achieve. You know, we need to get something going and so on. So that's obvious. I think where it's more challenging is where you've got something a bit nebulous. Um, I had my own I experience having left uh, corporate, and that's, that's another story for another day. But I basically didn't know what I was going to do. And it was like, uh, OK, you need to do something. And what I did was, and it comes on to the next one, really, is actually a 100-day plan. I didn't know necessarily exactly what the, f the finish was, but I set myself a target for the first 100-day chunk. I was going to get clear, was I going to work for myself or was I going to go back into other employment? That was, if you like, the exam question. That was my vision to be, uh, I would have an answer to that question. Why 100 days? Well, actually, when I was out in Germany, it was the time that Gerhard Schroeder was chancellor, just been elected, and there was a big thing all in, in the press about his first 100 days, you know, what had he done? And, and it struck me, also in the work that I was doing with his company, that it's a very, very useful chunk of time. It's long enough that you can achieve quite a lot in 100 days, but it's not so long that it's way out there and you don't actually do something. So we'll talk uh, and go in more detail on, on this one. Gauging people and resources. Even if it's a project for yourself, um, for instance, in Toastmasters, it might be writing, uh, you know, doing three speeches in the, in the next 100 days, say, for example. You might want to engage other people in that. If you haven't got a mentor, perhaps you want to get a mentor. Might just be a friend that you can bounce ideas off. You know, things, none of us are an island, is the saying, and I think the more you can bring people in. So it's identifying who are the sort of people that would help me in achieving what I want to achieve. Or it might be you need money or funds or whatever else, but you know, you need to be clear on what resources you need and be able to get the right people on. Focus. I said again, in the fire situation, it was pretty obvious that was the, that was the main game in town. Uh, but one of the things I find, particularly working with small business owners, and I find myself as a small business owner, there are so many things that need to be done. That's, you know, that's quite a challenge to actually, okay, where to start? And I think that's where things can go wrong, because you think, oh, I don't know where to start, and so you don't. And you know, then it, it just sticks. Um, so, we'll, again, we'll, we'll talk a little bit on that because I, I think the next one, taking action, 
is so important. And particularly in that state of overwhelm, it's very easy just to kind of shut down and be in a, in a grind. I always remember, uh, it was, it was when I was at university, there was a, a fair came to town and I got in this huge tube, it looked like a good idea at the time, enormous tube with carpet in it and it started to rotate and so the idea, you were sort of walking along. I thought, well this is easy, what, what's the problem? And suddenly they put the strobes on and it just completely freaks you out because you, I don't know, you, you, do, you lose the fact it's moving. So suddenly we were being tumbled all together in this big tube <laughs> and I can tell, I don't know how long it went on, it was probably only two minutes, but it felt like forever. And I don't know about you, but there are times when I feel I'm back in that tube just being tumbled. You ever, anyone relate to that? Yeah. It's horrible, isn't it? You just think, ah. So uh, I think what I've learned uh, is to have a, have a strategy when I feel I'm in that place, react to the feeling and think, right, time for act, you know, time for something, uh, emergency plan here, uh, and I'll, I'll share some of the, the things that I do to actually get out. And just do something um, is, is most important. It might just be one telephone call, but that can trigger a series of things and it gets you moving. Reviewing progress. Now, time scales for that can vary. In the fire situation, we had reviews every six hours uh, round the clock, or certainly six to eight hours, because that was the sort of time scale we were dealing with. Now, depending on what you're uh, dealing with, I wouldn't think, and certainly what I'm dealing with now, I don't have them that frequently, but certainly weekly, I think is a, is a good discipline. Just sit down, how's it going? Uh, and you know, it's using evaluation skills, all sorts of stuff, we're gonna talk more on that. And overriding everything, I think, is having a winning mentality. You know, I do uh, quite a lot of music as one of my hobbies. I play the cello, and I'm fortunate enough to go for coaching weekends with, with some of the top uh, string chamber groups uh, in the country. Um, I've heard other top people talking. It doesn't matter whether they were former RAF pilots, um, footballers, or whatever. I think there's one thing that comes through, and again where Toastmasters can really help, it's about confidence. You know, it's such a, a hinge on whether you perform or not. You know, it's having the confidence and the courage to take a step, to do something, to launch into the unknown in some ways, and actually, you know, in scoping a project like that. And also be striving for excellence. You know, I think if I was to pick two things out, what struck me over at the uh, international convention in Las Vegas, you know, hearing the people who were on the, in the world final, virtually all of them had got coaches, they'd studied and scrutinized the past winners, uh, and what they did, they've really put a lot of effort in. And I think it's sometimes we think, well, we'd like to be better, but all these top people, to me, they've put the grunt work in and you don't see that, you know, when somebody launches at the top level, you haven't seen the, the donkey years work. Again, the uh, winner of the Golden Gavel Award, Robin, Teresa, help me, whatever, the guy who wrote um, the, man, the Monkey Sold His Ferrari, leadership guy, uh, he said uh, it took him 16 years to become an overnight success. <laughs> uh, I feel I quite like that. Uh, so I think it is, to me, that's a mindset. You know, if you're wanting to get results consistently and also looking at, at what, if things didn't work, why was that? What can we learn from it? So what we're going to focus on today, because we've got a little bit limited time, I want to give you on three, and on the handout, we'll be going and working in pairs uh, to have um, little exercises to get you thinking. So what I would like you to be just being aware of, if there's one particular project that you can have in mind, it might be something in Toastmasters, it could be something completely outside, it, it doesn't matter, because this, this technique is useful in every area of your life. So if you just be aware of something you'd like to focus on, just to have your own worked example, because I find that you'll be able to uh, apply and, and learn the material better. So these are the ones we're, we're going to uh, focus on. And yes, yeah, so a 100-day plan, taking action, and then actually reviewing. Uh, because I think these are ones which can actually really uh, get you going. Is that, uh, is that okay? Mm -hmm. So...